let's look at a problem of how to draw the cyclic form from the linear form. On the left we have our steps, on the right side of the screen we have our sugar that we're going to manipulate. The first step says draw in the numbers of the carbons from top to bottom. So we're going to number this guy C1, then C2, then C3, C4, C5, and C6. Okay, so numbering the carbons tells us that we have a hexose, and looking at carbon 1, we see that our carbonyl is on the end, so we have an aldose. So this is an example of how to take the linear form of an aldohexose and draw the cyclic form. We've numbered, so that was step one. Step two is to redraw the sugar turned 90 degrees to the right and then renumber. So I'm going to take this guy, copy and paste them, and rotate 90 degrees to the right. I always go to the right just by convention. You should also always go to the right if you want your structures to look like mine and not be the flipped over version of them. I didn't have to renumber since I copied and pasted, but when you renumber, you're going to have to go starting right to left. So carbon one is on the right in your drawing. Step three says draw a bond from the second to last oxygen to the carbonyl carbon. The second to last oxygen is the same one that you're looking at to tell whether your sugar is D or L. I've marked it here in red in both drawings. It's the last OH on a chiral carbon. So that is the one that we're going to connect. So we're going to connect this oxygen with the carbonyl carbon, which in this case is carbon 1. So I've connected them. Step 4 is erase the double bond. Step 5 is move the hydrogen from the second to last oxygen onto the carbonyl oxygen. So we're moving the red hydrogen onto the blue oxygen. We're going to erase the double bond. When I erase my double bond, it's automatically going to give me an OH. And I'm going to turn that hydrogen into a red hydrogen, because that is my red hydrogen. And then I'm going to get rid of that hydrogen. So step four, we erase the double bond. It's now single. Step five, we moved the hydrogen from here to here. Now we are ready for step six. Step six says count the atoms in the ring. Notice that we have formed a ring here between this oxygen and these carbons. So that's a ring now that we've connected the two ends. Notice also that this group is left out of the ring. So if I count, I'm going to start with my oxygen. That's atom 1, atom 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So I have a six-membered ring that includes one oxygen and five of the carbons. We are essentially done. And if this were a multiple choice question, you would probably be able to figure out what the actual drawing was and be able to pick it without having to draw the rest of it. But we're going to go ahead and make our ring look nice. So I'm going to draw a nice six-membered ring here. Notice it's the side-on view. And I'm going to always place the oxygen in the back right corner. So that was step seven, was to draw the ring. Now we have to assign the numbers. And the way I get my numbers is to look at my oxygen, which is still the red oxygen, because that's the one that's part of the ring. So looking at my red oxygen, I see what is it bonded to. It is bonded to carbon 1, because we connected it, and carbon 5. I always put the lower number carbon on the front right side of the oxygen and the higher number in the back or left side of the oxygen. So our oxygen is between carbons 1 and 5. And you can tell that in between carbons 1 and 5 are carbons 2, 3, and 4. So we're just going to label those now just for bookkeeping purposes. 
Okay, so step seven is done. We drew our ring, nice pretty six-membered ring. We assigned numbers to the carbons. Now we have to add the hydroxyl groups and the hydrogens. I'm always going to skip the carbon one, the anomeric carbon, and save it for last. So that's step 10. So I'm not going to do this one yet. The anomeric carbon is last. So skip that one. Move on to C2. If you look at C2 in our drawing of the side, sideways one, you can see that there is an OH that is down. And in fact, if you look at carbons 3 and 4, there's also an OH down. So I'm going to draw those down OHs. I'm going to leave the hydrogens out because it can get really messy if you start drawing all of them. We're also not going to draw in any OHs on carbon 5 because it doesn't have an OH on it anymore. It has this oxygen, and then it has this group here, which is the CH2OH. Step 9 tells you what to do with carbon 6. It says add the CH2OH. If it's D, put it on the top. If it's L, put it on the bottom. Well, if we look at our OH that is on the last chiral carbon, it's on the right, so this is a D sugar. So that means we need to put our CH2OH on the top. So C6 is up. So there's that. We're almost done. We have to put our hydroxyl group on the anomeric carbon to reflect alpha or beta. I didn't say whether we were going to draw alpha or beta, so let's draw both. If I place my OH so that it is up and cis to my CH2OH group, then this is beta. If I place my OH so it is down and trans to my CH2OH, then this one is alpha. So we've just drawn both of those.